Visa is using Ethereum and yet you still maybe have someone telling you that cryptocurrency isn't here to stay. Antisocial, stupid, immoral, threat poison. My name is Vosk. You're on the Vosk Coin YouTube channel. We're gonna run through this news. Sorry about the mess in the middle of moving right now. Everything's crazy and hectic. But as always, there's so much stuff to run through. So yesterday, Visa published a report on the experiments with ERC-4337, which is account abstraction. This is a huge payments company experimenting with Ethereum, and they do a great job showcasing the potential uses of ERC-4337. And before we dig even deeper, let's recap Ethereum. Ethereum is the second biggest cryptocurrency. It's the most used cryptocurrency, at least that people want it to be, but the transaction fees are high. Uh, but I'll talk about how that is actually not really a factor in this equation. Ethereum has a value or a market cap of $214 billion. Over $6 billion was traded just yesterday and it cost $1,783 to just buy one of these coins even though it's still down 63% from its all-time high. Ethereum is here to stay and stuff like this as well. It's the reason why. ERC-4337 though, deployed on mainnet this year. They had an audit completed by Open Zeppelin. They have bundlers and paymasters, and they even have over $300,000 in grants from Ethereum. Paymasters is huge and they just demonstrated fully sponsored and ERC-20 transactions. And Pimlico HQ has launched a fully audited and permissionless ERC-20 Paymaster. I'm gonna try to keep this simple, but I'll have these links out in the video description below so you can follow along or dig even deeper if you'd like to. But I really cannot understate how important this is, how huge this really is. So there's two types of wallets on Ethereum, externally owned wallets or accounts, EOAs, and smart contract accounts. EOAs, or the externally owned accounts, are controlled via private keys, and they're required to initiate transactions. With ERC-4337, we have a new transaction flow, ERC-4337, I'm gonna say that a lot, I guess, today. These wallets can initiate transactions. The wallets are programmable and aren't required to be authenticated through private keys, Instead, you can use things like biometrics or mobile devices to authorize these transactions. These wallets submit a new transaction type called user operations. UOs are then processed by bundlers, which act like EOAs to send transactions to the blockchain. In addition to the wallets and bundlers, there's also an optional paymaster contract. Uh, there's multiple contracts. These are called before transaction is executed. These paymasters can sponsor or pay for gas fees on behalf of the user. This is basically a way to take the transaction fees out of the equation. This is a way that perhaps your credit card fee is then paying for that on-chain transaction. So all of this is truly happening on-chain, verifiable, smart contracts, blockchains. This is off the chain, my friends. This, this is really cool. This is kind of maybe a little boring, maybe a little technical, sound a little nerdy, but if we could move these transactions to the chain, what a really cool thing. Now we just need to sprinkle a whole lot of privacy on top, but as long as these are anonymous, then it does have that pseudo privacy aspect. Visa in particular just put together two prototypes that demonstrate the potential use cases of the new Paymaster flow. The Paymaster can facilitate the use of ERC-20 tokens to pay for gas fees, number one. Or then, number two, use the Paymaster just to completely cover the gas fees for a transaction. Here's how a Paymaster could work in practice. A user who only has USDC and wants to pay a merchant for a product no longer needs to carry the native chain token. Instead, a Paymaster can cover the gas fees charge a small fee, right? And the user would never need to buy or hold Ethereum. And you may say, well, how is this huge for Ethereum? Well, don't forget, this has all happened on Daddy Ethereum's blockchain. This is all in the house of ETH. 
remember when Game of Thrones was so cool and it's like all everybody talked about and it was all exciting and then Sunday came around you're like yeah and then like they absolutely trashed the last two seasons and had one of the worst endings in uh, just s cinema history I remember I know this is hard for you but winter is coming Catherine Gu has a breakdown here, right? Rethinking digital transactions with account abstraction, right? Visa continues to explore real world applications for blockchain. Blockchain's here to stay, crypto's here to stay, and so am I, I'm about this. This is so exciting. Despite ongoing advancements though with blockchains, they currently struggle to offer the same level of flexibility and user experience found in the mainstream digital payments ecosystem. Emerging technologies, however, can enhance the payments experience when transacting in digital currencies. Enter auto payments for self-custodial wallets, delving into the application of cutting edge technology to automate payments by leveraging the concept of account abstraction on public blockchains. Understand that this is not some blog. Okay, this is usa.visa.com slash. This is cool. Visa's not the only one getting in the crypto game either. Mastercard.us slash business grow your business slash crypto. There's a little bit more in there. Okay, scaling and securing the crypto ecosystem together, crypto and blockchain, 3 billion cards circulating worldwide, 90 million acceptance locations, grow revenue by enabling customers to easily use their cryptocurrency. They can help you launch your own crypto card program and reduce the complexity. Okay, this this is crazy. So we're just we're just on master and they're like, yeah, you want to deploy a crypto card program? Uh, then there's something scary over here, helping you stay crypto native and payment flows, providing more choice to you and your customers by working to support select digital currencies, Ugh. including central bank digital currency, CBDCs, the key to holding everyone in this world under the thumb of the government as we progress in the digital age. I could go on and on about CBDCs, but let me just put it simply, they are terrifying. 48% of their global consumers they boast here have or would consider buying cryptocurrency. There is interest in crypto activities. These guys even boast about their crypto consulting services. They're not just dipping their toe in, they're swimming in the deep end. They're also the ones behind Binance's crypto debit or prepaid card, TAP's card funded by crypto, Nexo's crypto back credit card, and then Gemini's card with crypto reward. Which to be specific, that's a credit card that has multiple cryptocurrency reward options. And what's even crazier is MasterCard has over 89 blockchain patents. Yeah, just like I'm about to get you to start patenting that subscribe button. Step one is to click it. My name is Vosk, you're on the Vosk on YouTube channel, home of our CPO, our chief payments officer here, Tails Vosk. I hope you subscribe and stick around. I hope you like the content. If you don't, we're too bad. Subscribe and stick around and don't comment mean things because I'm sick and tired of it. And I know I need a haircut, so stop telling me. God dang it. I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Yeah, I went crazy somewhere along the way.